You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me today, as always, on this Training Thursday show. Can't wait to get into it. Very controversial topic here today. And I know a lot of the personal trainers, a lot of health professionals are going to get mad at me for today's show, but that's okay. I always say, if I'm not offending at least one group of people per episode, I'm doing something wrong. And, you know, I'm I'm basically saying that tongue-in-cheek because the truth is that None of the information that I provide should be offensive. The only time that something should be offensive is that if you're so entrenched into your dogmatic thinking that you're not willing to open your mind to new possibilities, that then should actually be a key. Why am I offended by this? And I'm actually, again, when I always talk about this in the Cabral concept, I'm literally sharing with you things that I've learned over my lifetime that I've accumulated where. If I get upset about something, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I'm having a pretty violent reaction to this. Why am I so upset? Is this something that's basically holding a mirror up to me of why I'm getting so upset? I think I'm getting to a little motivation and mindset Monday, but that's okay. I'm going to do that for a moment. So I always ask myself like, okay, why did that offend me? Like, why am I getting offended by this person's diet plan, by this person's exercise plan, by this person's advice? What is it about that? That's offensive to me. Is it that I think that it's doing a disservice to other people or do I feel like it's going against something inside of myself that I've kind of built up a wall around that is trying to tear down that wall? And if that's the case, I need to reevaluate. So it's kind of like when someone gives advice about paleo-based diet, a primal-based diet, a keto-based diet, a low-carb diet, a Mediterranean diet, a candida diet, all of these things, I say to myself, and if I get offended by it, why am I getting offended by it? Now, the only time I get offended by it, by, you know, you, get, you heard me go on that rant last Friday about the bacon and butter diet, is that the only time I get offended now is when I feel that people are going to be hurt by it. Like, that's the thing. Because I know as health practitioners, we're all doing our best. I mean, on the Cabral concept, I'm talking for like 25 minutes a day, literally. I'm going to say something that is kind of like, it can be twisted, it can be turned into a million different ways by someone who just sees that my agenda isn't pure, and it is pure. But like, so I totally get that, that like my words could be twisted or I myself might be reading into someone else's diet and twisting that. So that's why I try to always keep an open mind. I understand that everyone, I believe that most health practitioners are coming about this from a pure standpoint, meaning that we're always trying to do good and do right by our clients or or patients. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Totally agree with it. And that's why I always want to be easy and gentle on whatever I see. And that's why I typically never name names. Now, Sometimes there's egregious things. When you say everyone should be doing this or, or basically everyone should try it, whenever I see the everyone or I see it being advertised as the panacea, I get very worried, right? I really do. And so that's why I, I worry about people in general that that's, I think I just get maybe really overly defensive because I just feel like no one was there for me and my family when I was really sick and in and, and a lot of pain. And I just feel like we need people out there they're going to look out for those people with misinformation. And I can't wait to talk about this because, you know, there's a topic that's near and dear to me and that's chronic fatigue and that's people suffering from debilitating flu-like symptoms, joint pain, all of those things, autoimmune. And I was there and there's articles being written where these people are just hoping for research to come out to heal them. And and I, I mean, I just don't ever wait for the research. I mean, it's awful because the research is just going to lead to some pharmaceutical drug and that's not the answer. So essentially, this is a long intro for a topic is where I'm saying to you right now, can you lose weight without exercise? Remember, there's more than one way to lose weight. There's more than one way to get healthy. And that's why I want to talk about exercise in general today from a macro standpoint, who it's best for, when to use it, should you use it for weight loss? And then um, just the understanding though of what the Cabral concept, the Cabral concept is all inclusive which means there is no philosophy. The philosophy is more like a Bruce Lee-based philosophy where you look at the best of everything. 
You look at the best of everything and then you form it into one philosophy, which is an assimilation of all of the best around you. So yes, Bruce Lee had Jeet Kune Do, but it was an assimilation of all other st- forms of martial arts that he studied from really around the world. And that's where I feel like, you know, if I've done anything, it's just I've accumulated the best from the masters from around the world. And I've tried to make that into one form of natural medicine. But that's why I'm also very careful because I come from this from a fitness background as well. And so the understanding that I believe that personal trainers really have one of the most amazing and impactful jobs in the world. Uh, To me, it's one of the top vocations in the world. I really believe that. Because as a personal trainer, you affect the lives of people on such a deep level. You're seeing people once a week, twice a week, three times a week, or maybe even more. And you're seeing people a lot more than they may even see family or friends. You're meeting with them you know, multiple times a week for between 30 and 60 minutes. And you're talking with people about their nutrition. You're talking with them about their healthy lifestyle. You're talking with them about their sleep. You're talking with them about their mindset. That's honestly why I believe that personal trainers are like therapists, nutritionists, coaches, exercise physiologists, all in one. I mean, it's, it's to me, one of the top fields in the world. I can't recommend it enough. If you're someone that loves the health and fitness industry and you love a little nutrition, you love a little exercise, you love a little health coaching, you love a little mindset motivation, look into personal training. Become a personal trainer, even if it's part-time. I mean, the world needs more good people and they need more good people serving others through this health-based platform. And I think no better place in the world than as a personal trainer. So, which leads me to my next point here. Can you lose weight? Can you get healthy really without exercise? And the truth is that you can, but should you? Okay, so here's the thing. Yes, you can lose weight without exercise, okay? I want to give you a little story, a little anecdote. I was working with a client, body transformation client. This was over 10 years ago now. But I remember very specifically, because I've worked with thousands of people, and there's only been a couple people who got worse with exercise. So that's why, remember, this is point, well, less than 0.1% of the population, But I'll always remember this client because she taught me a lot well over 10 years ago. This is before I was actually a board-certified naturopathic doctor, which just simply means before I got deep into this functional medicine, is that I wasn't lab testing people 12 years ago when I was working with this particular client. Had I, I would have known that her cortisol levels were through the roof. So she would come in and she would be exhausted She would have these dark circles on her eyes, but more than that, she would just look wiped out, like no color to her skin, and she'd be dragging. And I could just see her body did not want to do these exercises. But I'm pushing her through the exercise. I'm like, you can do this. Come on, let's work. You know, because she wanted to lose weight, and I wanted to help her lose weight. So we had the nutrition going. Yeah, she was looking, she was losing a little bit of weight, but not like she was supposed to. She was not responding in the same way that a lot of clients in her same position who need to lose 30 plus pounds were responding. She was losing maybe like one pound a week, two pounds a week. That is not where she should have been at. So I'm like, okay, things are not working. Whenever things are not working, we can't keep doing the same thing. I said, here's the thing. You're exhausted. You are wiped out. My homework for you over this next week is this. Anytime that you would come to see me, I want you to walk. That's it. I just want you to walk. I want you to spend a little bit more time sleeping. So I don't want you to wake up to do your workout. I want you to sleep. Your job, this is homework. You need to check in with me. You weren't really texting 12 years ago. I don't know if most people know this, but really 12 years ago wasn't a lot of texting going on. I said, you need to email me. You need to email me and let me know that you are getting eight hours of sleep per night and you are not working in your bed before you go to bed because that's leading to you too much EMFs, too much all this stuff. And again, we weren't really talking about EMFs 12 years ago, but I knew about light and I knew about all these things with, with destroying the circadian rhythm because I knew what it did for my body. So I said, your job is to meet me in one week. So like sometimes happens, I didn't really get the emails. I didn't know what was going on. She came back a week later and I'm like, whoa, I'm like, you look different. I said, what's going on? She said, well, work was busy, but I still took your advice. I slept. I went to bed an hour earlier every night. I got about eight to nine hours of sleep. I said, wow, you were getting like six before. That's fantastic. And she said, I was just trying to like, just be easy on myself. Just eat lightly. I went for my walks. I don't know if I got my 10,000 steps or not, but I went for a walk every day and she came back and she lost. I can still remember this a little over six pounds. I can actually remember the number because I'm weird like that with numbers and visuals. 6.7 pounds in a week, no exercise. And she was losing one to two pounds a week before that. And I said to her, 
I'm not going to give her name away because she might be listening right now. But I said to her, I said, I said, I said, so you followed this, you got more sleep, you didn't exercise, your nutrition was pretty much the same. So what was the key? We always need to figure out what were our takeaways. She said, well, I put the work away after eight o'clock at night. I got more sleep. I felt less stressed when I woke up. I didn't feel as exhausted. I actually wanted to eat a little bit better because I wasn't so tired. So I wasn't craving as much of the sugar and the carbs. So I think I ate a little bit better, but definitely it was a sleep. So I said, that's really interesting. And again, I had studied cortisol in depth, but wasn't able to lab test her. I said, you know what? I bet that before, if we had lab tested you, because again, I didn't have access to the labs because I wasn't board certified back then. So I couldn't get the labs to people, even though I would love to have gotten them like through a site like ours now that you can. So personal trainers out there, remember you can lab test because now you can get your clients the results you want by just sending them to stephencabral.com forward slash store. And again, it's not an advertisement. Like if you want, hook up with a functional medicine doctor in your area. I'm good with that too. But get your clients lab tested. There's nothing wrong with that because then they can share the data with you. Because if you're listening to this show, you're starting to learn about functional medicine. I always tell people, if you go back and listen from like episode 100 on of the Cabral concept, that's your education right there. Honestly, I know I'm biased, right? But this is the education that I would have wanted. This is the, what I would have wanted if I was teaching at a university. This is what I would be teaching. So again, we're just trying to disrupt this whole information age and just get you the information that, I mean, 25% of listeners right now are other doctors or other health practitioners. So you're getting the same information as them. I really believe that this is some things that we can pass on to others. So what I'm saying is I said to this client, I bet your cortisol levels were through the roof. So what we did was we gave your body a one week reprieve from just extra stress. Because remember, what happens is when we do exercise, although it's great for our body, if we're exercising too hard and our body's already wiped out, we're increasing cortisol, we're increasing stress. So it's also why when I work with Olympic athletes, when I work with high school athletes, and their, their bodies need more rest. I mean, that's the bottom line. So take an Olympic athlete. They're training for three, four plus hours a day. And the rest of their job is essentially nutrition and sleep. I mean, that's really it. Olympic athlete studying your, your craft, working with your coaches, sleeping, eating, doing your exercise. I mean, that, that's because that's your full-time job. Now, high school kids, they're supposed to be sleeping even more because their body's still developing. They're training once or twice a day for the real, like, true athletes. I'm talking like I work with a lot of swimmers and they're waking up at the crack of dawn. So they, they're doing homework late into the night. They're not being kids. They're stressed. And they come to me saying like, okay, like how do we take this to the next level? I say, okay, well, let's actually give them some rest. And like, they can't rest. They need to train. I said, okay, they have plateaued now for the past six weeks. That's why you came to see me. By training more, you're not going to get better results. Remember, you know, here's this, my golden rule of, of helping to get better performance in life better health, better weight loss through exercise. If you're already at your max capacity and you plateaued, can you do more? No, because you just told me you were at max capacity. So would doing more get you better results? No. Okay. So bottom line is now we have to train smarter, which means we need to change up the program or do an unloading week. An unloading week means either do half the percentage you used to, or just do yoga, just do Tai Chi, just do stretching, just do massage, just do active rest, or take the week off. Remember, there's no way as an athlete or as a human being that you're just going to totally regress within a week. Not going to happen. Two weeks? Yeah, there could be some regression for sure, but you're taking one week off. That's it. Okay. Or you're doing very, very light workouts. So you'll do a light, you know, workout with whatever, do something fun. So that's how I look at it. Now, now let's get back to the question at hand. Can you lose weight without exercise? Yes. Not everyone, which means most people, when they do the 21 day Dr. Ball detox, the 14 day, the seven day, or even our fat loss aid plan. They they don't exercise. I mean, that's just the truth. I love them to exercise, but they don't. Okay, and they still lose weight. Why? Because the majority of weight loss does come through nutrition, balancing hormones, balancing inflammation. That's the truth. I mean, that's the bottom line. Again, as someone that owns a very large personal training studio, body transformation, as well as a functional medicine practice in Boston that I recommend exercise, I'm just letting you know, you don't need it to lose weight in the short term. So let me just, I I just got that real quick in there in air quotes, in the short term, all right? And you'd be seeing that if I was on video. (laughs) Because in the long term, if you want to keep the weight off, you better believe you need to be training your body. And I'm not talking about those arm exercises that a lot of people do bicep curls and a little bit of abs after they do their cardio. No, that's not going to boost your metabolism. In the long term, you need to be doing two to three days a week 
of strength-based training. Ideally, metabolic resistance training, as we call it, which means you're doing your squats and deadlifts and your step-ups and your lunges. And if you come back and say, I can't do squats because of my knees, then all I'm going to tell you is you're going to work on your form so that it doesn't hurt your knees. Because in life, we all need to sit down onto a chair and stand up. We all need to sit down to a toilet and stand up. And you should be able to do that pain-free. So you're going to work on that with a personal trainer to make sure you get pain-free, which means you're going to work on opening up your hips and you're going to open up your glutes and you're going to work it up your hip flexors and your TFL and all these muscles, IT band that need to be opened up, right? And then you're going to strengthen the glutes. You're going to strengthen your core. You're going to get those knees back into proper alignment and then there'll be no more knee pain. And that includes meniscus tears and all these other issues that are going on. Believe me, they can be fixed. So in the long run, you need to be doing your squats, your deadlifts, your lunges, and your step-ups. It doesn't matter whether you're 20 years old or 80 years old, you need to be doing them. Your weight load will change. Your amount of sets and reps will change, but you still need to do them because you're a human. And if you want to be a human that still has a good quality of life, that works on fall prevention, that works on keeping your bones strong, you still need to do those exercises. Okay. Then comes your chest presses and your shoulder presses and your rows and your lat pull downs and your chops and all those different exercises. That's what you need two to three days per week, even if you did a Monday, Thursday, or a Wednesday, Friday, or Wednesday, Saturday, or any of those days, a couple days in between, so you're not going too long without exercise, you are going to be able to keep your metabolism strong in the long run. So why do you need exercise, not in the short term, but in the long term? Well, the reason is this. In the short term, you're going to get short-term results through your nutrition, and then your nutrition will start to plateau. Well, you'll lose about 1% of your body weight per week if that's your goal, which means if you weigh 150 pounds, you lose 1.5 pounds or anywhere between one and two pounds per week until you reach your goal weight. But remember, that's also going to come then from the caloric burn from your workout, your 10,000 steps per day for just being an active human, not too sedentary. And then in the long term, it's going to come from doing metabolic-based exercises that work on the largest muscles in your body, which are essentially your leg muscles from your kneecap up to your hip bone, which is right on top of that hip where the iliac crest is. That's what it's called. And you want to work those muscles, okay? And you also want to make them strong so they burn calories all day long, which means not just during your workouts. Okay, so that's the truth. The truth is that you won't hear it a lot of other places. You don't need need exercise to lose weight in the short term. But what happens is if you keep losing weight, if you keep dieting without the exercise, you're going to become what's called skinny fat. And I say that very affectionately because what happens is you lose the weight, but you lose a lot of that tone of your body which means your arms start to look softer. You don't have those nicely defined shoulders. Your glutes start to sag a little bit. So yes, you weigh less, but you start to put on a little belly fat around the middle as well. So again, you might weigh less, but on the scale, it looks good. But I should say in the mirror, not as much as you would like it to be. Again, we're not looking for vanity here. I'm not telling anybody to become stick thin. All I'm telling you is to develop your best body for you. Whatever that is, it's perfect. Whatever you like it to be, But remember, it should be healthy. And a healthy body should look toned. I mean, it really should. Like, I'm not demeaning anyone here. The more toned your body looks, that includes ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph. And I know the mesomorph is going to look a little more toned, so it's not fair. I understand that. But everybody, their body should look supple. Like, it should look like, wow, that person, they exercise. You want people to say that about you. That's not a vanity thing. That's a, wow, that person looks healthy. They look fit. That's the whole point. So that's why... You know, I like that. I love the new slogan. A slogan. You like that? I can buy the words here. You'll see in a second. Slogan, strong. Strong is the slogan. Strong is the new skinny. I love that. I don't want people overweight. I want them to look strong. I want them to look fit. Like, I think that, man, that to me, that's what attractive is, is that person looks healthy. That person looks like they're in good shape. They don't necessarily have six pack abs. But that person's body looks like it could go run an obstacle course. That's what I want to see. That person looks fit. That's what I think is the place you want to get to. And I'm telling you, three days a week can get you there. I know I said you could do it in two. It's true. Just because of the, when I look at the actual studies, when I look at the research, because I know that I try to break things down into action-based steps for you, but I'm big on the research. I really am. And I'm not discounted at all because what I try to do is give you the data from the research. The research shows two days a week, non-consecutive days. So it has to be a day or two in between if you're only doing two days a week. My favorite, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, keep the weekend for fun activities. Or if you're able to go more on the weekend, great, that's fine as well. But you know, my big thing is, is, is stay active. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, start the week off right. Love that. that just a huge fan of that. And I'll tell you, you're going to get in great shape doing that. And that's going to be able to stick. You're going to be able to stick with that for life. Going five days a week, 
it might not work for you. It might not work in the long term. You know, it really might not. But three days a week, I think everyone should be able to build that into a healthy routine. Even if it was like, let's say a Saturday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday, because Mondays are super busy for you, that could work as well. Of the every other day, I think that's going to work. And then you get your 10,000 steps per day. So hopefully that makes sense is that, yes, you can lose weight in the short term, but only only in the short term, because if you do not exercise in the long term, which means even things like body weight exercises and, and you know, where you're putting a little bit of strain on the body, because in the long term, you'll be sacrificing results. I really do believe that. That's what I've seen happen over and over in my practice. I just know a lot of people. I've helped a lot of people lose weight. They can lose the weight in the short term. They can do things like a detox. They can do things like going a little bit lower carb, any of these things. But remember, if you don't want to strip away your muscle in the long term, you're going to want to make sure that you're training with weights or at least really pushing your own body weight to that limit. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into another Cabral Concept. Hopefully, today's show made sense. If it didn't, feel free to always ask me follow-up questions by going to stephencabral.com forward slash askcabral. Those questions that come in are the place that I answer your questions, and that is those are answered on the weekend each and every weekend during our Cabral house calls. Just takes about three weeks or so for me to get to your personal questions. So always happy to do that. Thank you again. Please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could help. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.